name's James Franklin. I'm a singer-songwriter from the Dandenong Ranges in Victoria. Please enjoy this interview with Gig Chimps. Follow, like, and subscribe to be updated on everything they do. And um, please enjoy this video. <laughs> Don't know how to play banjo. Don't know why I picked it up. My dad is a full-time musician. He has been his whole life, and um, you know, I had that influence of, of that being his job. But also, we just played a lot of music in the house. A lot of Michael Jackson, Stevie Wonder, Sting. Um, so uh, from a young age, I had a strong um, musical appreciation. First time I really kind of decided that I wanted to make it my career. I remember that primary school there was this day where we had to come dressed up as a celebrity and essentially in character as a celebrity. And at the time there was a show called Drake and Josh which was a really really big show when I was younger. I loved the show and especially I thought Drake from the show was really cool. In the show he was a musician and in real life Drake Bell who played Drake was um and he's a musician. So he, he wrote and sung the theme tune for this show. So I thought for this for this day at school, I would I'd get my dad to teach me the most basic version um, he could of the theme song and I would perform it for my class. So I did that and I remember getting the applause and I think it stroked my ego more than anything. Um, from that moment, I kind of went, okay, this is something I, um, I want to follow. And now it's, it's my career. can't play the mandolin either. I eventually want to learn. My creative process is mainly unconscious, I'd say. I've been writing for many years now and I feel like I've discovered that most of my songs came from me actively staying out of the way. Song ideas, whether it be a lyric or a melody line that pops in your head, they come from nowhere, you know, they come from somewhere. But, but it doesn't feel a part of me. So when I have that idea and I want to sit down and, and flesh it out, what I usually do is just kind of press record on, on my phone voice notes and just sing, not let anything get in the way, not, not think about the next line I'm gonna sing or the next lyric, just sing. And sometimes that's just scatty things coming out, sometimes little lyric lines come out that are, that are um, interesting. After doing that, and picking up on the good bits that I like and reintroducing them after kind of maximum 60 minutes working on that, um, I either have a song or I don't. So I, I play it in full and I go, okay, that's a song, that's a good song. I'm happy with that, it's honest. Or I play it and go, I don't like that, it's not working. And then that song just goes off to die. I never return and try to rewrite it or, or try and um, reuse some of the, the melody or, or whatever, you know. Um, a song has 60 minutes to wow me and a lot of that process is just essentially it comes from somewhere above but yeah it definitely feels like the song comes through the vessel that is me onto the onto the paper um, and I like to say out of the way it never usually works for forcing it and then once you get into the studio you have to make a bit more effort consciously to to move the song in the way that you think best fits the overall vibe um, so that's where you get to kind of put your spin on it um, on these these words and this this melody that that came from somewhere else oh hello there um if i wasn't a musician you know i think the obvious answer would be uh some kind of writer in my downtime i'm, I'm writing a a novel, very fun and exciting to do to write in the long form when I'm used to writing in short form when I'm writing songs and, and any poetry. But if I'm going to step away from that, at the moment especially, I'm very inspired by professors and uh, lecturers at, at big universities who are just incredibly smart in their field and, and know what they're talking about, but, but also they, um, a lot of them now travel the world, you know, almost put on shows, but just talking about a, a, a subject or a problem or just some um, ways to live efficiently. And I look at those those guys and it still is, you know, in a, in a way performing, fighting to get your voice heard. I just really admire their intelligence and ability to uh, articulate com complex problems. I'd like to do that if I was smart enough, but I'm not there yet. <laughs> I 
it's never going to work with a wooden stick. And despite what people think, the triangle is a very hard instrument to master. My new album, Kid, this took about three out three years to um, come to life from the moment I decided I wanted to do an album to the actual release of the album. You know, I wanted to create a, a pop album and I felt like I had to spend a bit of time learning pop production if I was going to produce it myself. So I did that. I spent about six months and finally felt comfortable enough to, to challenge myself. So I got in the studio with the band and laid down all the foundations of each track. I spent more time putting production and new ideas over the top of that. And we got horns in, we got strings in, backing vocal groups in. Eventually, yeah, uh, after three years of all of that, the album came out. We had a big launch in Melbourne at the top in town. Bigger than ever seven piece band. The goal with this album was one, to continue songwriting honestly and releasing honest songs and just connect with people. I guess that was the main goal is to connect with people, you know. I wanted to do for people what songs have done for me. Whether I'm driving, home after a gig at 1 or 2 a.m. on the highway and got the windows down on a hot night and I'm blasting a song and just having the time of my life or I've had a terrible day and I'm in my dark room and I just want to put on some music to just lie down. I wanted to have music for every occasion people had a place to turn to and however they felt. And I felt like the best way to do that was to write honestly and not let the production get in the way of that. The song is just about things that I've learned and things that I'm trying to learn. And I'm, I'm sure there's some messages in there that people can relate to. You know, what's next for me? Um, uh, I, I really didn't get to finish the whole kind of run of promoting this album. Um, we got to play through Victoria and New South Wales, which was amazing. But I was supposed to be in the United States in April and May. And I also wanted to do the rest of the Australian states when um, when I could. So that's kind of first thing on my list is to get some, some travel and touring in and gigs around the country and hopefully the United States whenever is possible. In terms of the next kind of project, funny thing is I've just released this album and it took a long time to write and produce. But now I've got a whole new batch of songs that, that are ready to go. I've got a clear plan of what I want to do, how I want everything to sound. So that's ready to go and ready to start recording. But before I release anything, I really want to give this album um, as much love as it deserves and as much of a chance to you know, succeed as it deserves. So I'm just continuing promoting the album. I'm actually releasing another single um, with a kind of DIY music video, which is really fun to shoot um, for a song on the album called Who Hangs the Moon. So that'll be out soon, very soon. Um, and then hopefully we can get to playing shows again soon. Despite my Irish heritage, um, I cannot play the Bodron for the life of me. Uh, favourite gig of all time that I've um, played, you know, I've been fortunate enough to do lots of gigs over the years from from just one person in the room to tens of thousands on a couple of occasions. Um, but I think my favourite would be a couple of years ago I got to go over to um, the United States. You know, I've loved American music for such a long time and probably for the first 16 years of my life all I listened to was American music. So that had a, had a big place in my heart and, and I knew that one day I wanted to go over there and, and perform and, and uh, try to, to live up to my own expectations and um, almost fit in with the crowd and, and be on a similar level. So, so I went over to the States and uh, got to San Diego. There was this venue called the Stats West, which I love, a little theater. And I remember getting on stage within probably the first three notes that I sang. I remember feeling feeling a reaction from the audience, a good reaction. <laughs> Out of all the gigs I've done, you know, I've played long gigs and, and hundreds of gigs, but I can boil it down to just those three notes at the start of my first American gig ever were just so special to me to get um, a good reaction so quickly. It will forever be special to me. Thank you very much for watching this video. Please like and subscribe and um, and check out all the rest of the Gig Chimp stuff. You can find me on most things at James Franklin or James Franklin Music. Um, and I'll see you soon. On the street in Georgia Holding hands with a girl with a, her daughter Tried to speak so quiet but she heard Yet nervous as her head began to turn Oh